Third graders, this is Mr. Johnson here. I'm gonna do some writing with you this afternoon during your literacy asynchronous time. And you're gonna notice a theme as we progress with writing over the next couple of weeks. We're going to be talking about persuasive writing. Writing where you attempt to persuade people to believe in your opinion or your point of view. So to start, what do you think the word persuade means? Take a moment and think about it. Maybe jot it down on a piece of paper. When you persuade people, you're trying to convince them. You're convincing them to sort of think like you do or believe in something that you believe in. You know, typically kids are very good at this. I've heard some of you in Walmarts and grocery stores trying to persuade your parents to buy you some candy or buy you a toy. You work on them really hard giving all the reasons why you think you've earned that candy bar or that special toy. So whether you realize it or not, I bet a lot of you third graders are already very gifted at trying to persuade people. So after that quick explanation of the word persuade and the type of writing that we're gonna begin doing, let me take a moment to share the next screen with you and talk about the target for today's lesson. All right, third graders, read this with me. I can identify problems around me and think of possible solutions to these problems. I can identify problems around me and think of possible solutions to these problems. This is an important first step to persuasive writing. Mr. Johnson is going to demonstrate how you will complete this target today during your asynchronous time. What you will need to create today during this writing time is a T-chart. Notice I made one on a sheet of paper. This is probably what one you would create would look like. For my purpose of teaching today, I made this one on this marker board that I'm going to use to help show you, give you an example of what you need to do during your asynchronous writing time today. Now remember, I said I wanted you to think about or consider problems, problems that are around you. You might want to think of problems that you experience at school, problems that might happen to you at home, problems that might happen in your neighborhood. These are things that you know are issues that may cause you problems, your family problems, or your friends problems. So, you could think about school, for example, first, and maybe you could think that there are not many magazines in our media center. You might think that's a problem because if there were more magazines, there would be more uh, topics of interest that kids might like to check out and read about. All right, so that might be one problem that you could identify. Another problem that you might identify that could happen at school is kids not having other kids to play with at recess. This could be a problem that you know has happened when we're face to face in schools in the past. And you could know that that's something that's sort of serious that makes kids feel unhappy. And maybe you want to think of some ways or some solutions. Sorry, technical glitch. Maybe that's my problem. Some ways or solutions to take care of that problem of kids not having friends to play with at recess. Let me get back to my lesson. So after you devise a couple of problems, I would shoot for three or four third graders. I'm just doing two to get you started and get your minds warmed up to think about it. 
but you should probably shoot for three or four when you go to create your T-chart with problem and solution um, in just a few minutes. However, after you think of your problems, think of some possible solutions to those problems. Think of some ways that you can solve the problems that you brought up. So for example, Maybe if you're worried about the media center at your school having more magazines, you could start a magazine donation drive. And people that have magazines that are still in good shape could give them to your school so the kids could check them out and use them for reading. You could also talk to the uh, media specialist. about ordering magazines. Maybe if there is knowledge given to the media specialist that magazines are something that would help students be more interested in reading, you could have our wonderful media specialist, Ms. McCabe, look into getting some. Another, uh, uh, when you get to our other problem here, kids not having other kids to play with at recess, you can try to think of some solutions to solve that problem. One of the ones that we have here at Shao is that buddy bench. And you could encourage kids to use that buddy bench when they feel like they don't have someone to play with during recess time, or they could go to that buddy bench um, to help kids that they see are sitting there looking for a friend to play with at recess. So today, your job is just to think of three or four problems and then list a couple of solutions to those problems. And that is going to be your first step to think about persuasive writing. Because with persuasive writing, we always want to take things that we feel are problems and then encourage people, convince people to use some of our ideas to solve and fix those problems. I hope this has been useful. I hope it's been useful because now it is nearly time for you to do the work. Students, find a sheet of paper and make a T-chart that looks similar to this one. You will fill in problems you see around you and think of some potential solutions, possible solutions for those problems. Once you have created your T-chart, probably with three to four problems or more that you've come up with, and you've come up with solutions to those problems, take a photograph using your iPad of that t-chart and post it to the discussion board below this video. That will prove to me and all of the third grade teachers that you were thinking of problems and following the directions of today's task. So allow me to restate our target. I can identify problems around me and think of possible solutions to these problems. Your T-chart that you post on Schoology will be the evidence that you understand this target. Good luck, third grade students. Make sure to give your absolute best effort. I look forward to seeing, and your grade three teachers look forward to seeing, your wonderful ideas as we start this unit on persuasive writing. Have a great day.